Silicon Panel. Brought to you by Old Brother Productions and Norse Legion. Hey folks, welcome to the Con Panel. I hope everybody's doing well. Hey Kevin, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Did you enjoy your rather uh, uh, unintended vacation? We've been, uh, it's, been, it's been a little while, but we're, a back. Little while. we're back live. Well, I'm up. It was, it was nice, the, the little uh, cabin in the woods kind of thing, getting away from everybody and everything. And uh, now I'm two NSAIDs, two pain analgesics, and one narcotic into the show. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> so. And it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. And it's right. only 11 a.m. So. We just got back from, uh, from Martha's Vineyard, so we took, we took a trip, too, and it's been a rather uh, a hectic week. But the, uh, they're back in school now. The school is yeah. back in, so we're ready to, uh, ready to rock and roll. But we've got a great guest today. And it's finally somebody from uh, the newer movies. Usually we're doing the classic movies. And uh, uh, we got somebody from Rogue One. Uh, uh, my favorite character, as you can see, is all over my office here. Uh, <laughs> the new Darth Vader himself, Mr. Spencer Wilding. How you Yay. doing, Spencer? I'm good. How are you? Nice to see you, Kev. Nice I'm to see well. you. I'm doing well. So where are, you, uh, where are we talking to you from? Where are you at? Uh, at a very small town called Rill in North Wales. And that's in the UK. You were in Wales. Oh, I didn't know. I just, yeah. I just, I just assumed we were calling you in London. I just, because everybody else. No, 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 no. Is in no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a five hour drive from London. You were in Wales. Wow. Where, yeah. where in relation to like, because the only places I know in Wales is Holyhead and Cardiff. Right. Well, Holyhead is, uh, is an hour away from us. And Cardiff is five hours away from us on a train. So I'm really probably right in the middle of the country. There you go. We're, we're, have you ever heard of the city of Chester? Yes. Roman city. We're, right, we're 30 minutes drive from Chester on the coast. Okay. Mm, or an hour away from Manchester. Yeah, I, I, went through, I went through Wales like 20 years ago on my wow. way to Ireland. Because Holyhead takes the ferry to Dublin. But That's Wales right. is pretty, Wales looks a lot like Connecticut. Yeah, it's no beautiful. You know, we've got, the, we've got the seaside meeting the mountains here. It's gorgeous. You know, it's lovely, lovely little towns around here. You know what I mean? It's beautiful. Snowdonia Range. Uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins had half of that in trust for a while. You know, it's, it's just gorgeous, this part of uh, the England. Uh, well, Wales. Beautiful. Excellent. And you were born there, right? I was born in St. Asaph, which is the smallest city in the world. I think it's just been knocked off now. It's probably the second smallest or something. Uh, it's got a population of about 20,000 people, but it's got some cathedral, so it's a city. Yeah. And then that's about four miles away from Rill. Mm -hmm. So it's really close. Okay. Well, well, help me out here. Help me out here. So, so the definition of a city is if you have the cathedral? That's right. Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. I live in a town. Yeah. And the town only has 60,000 people, but we're a town, yeah. not a city. But we yeah. don't have a cathedral. Oh, that'd be it. Whereas Stamford, Connecticut has a cathedral and has 100,000 people. All right. I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah. And then okay, we also want to, what? Oh. <laughs> oh, I, I, are we done with the geography part of the interview or do you want to go on? Well, that's up to you, mate. I might fail that quiz, though. <laughs> I also want to mention that um, I was lucky to meet you in New York City at our first show. Well, actually, I met you before that. We're going to talk about that in a couple minutes. But um, I met you with your, um, with your awesome business partner, who's also with us today. Yeah. Uh, flying in from uh, Kansas, I believe, Miss uh, Stacy Williams. How are you doing, Stacy? Good. How are you, man? We, doing well. we, are, doing, we are doing fine. How's, uh, how are you doing during this whole, uh, uh, just, just so our viewers know, Stacy is, uh, is an agent uh, uh, for, the, for the stars. She has a lot of uh, clients that go to a lot of conventions that we all go to, many that I've been to. And of course, you know, because of COVID, we're all uh, sitting in our homes right now doing an interview with Kevin and Paul. But uh, so Stacy, how have you been doing? Well, actually, Spencer and I have a lot of clients. We own the beast together, so we have a lot of fun. But it, um, it's been interesting. It's been very interesting. Thank goodness for Zoom and for podcasts and different things. But we, I think both of us are ready to get back at it, aren't we, Spen? We are. We're itching for it. Yeah. 2021's coming. It's coming well, big time. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. I have some shows that are lined up uh, in April, and I think that's going to be the next time we're going to see this happen. Is, uh, and I'm hoping yeah. we're yeah. doing ICC in Tennessee, and that's, that's going to be – you guys should look into that show, and maybe uh -huh. we should do that offline. But uh, yeah, I, I work for the show. I'm the stage yeah. host at that show, as I am at many others that I work at. And that's, that's a great one. You guys, you guys would do really well there. 
And uh, yeah. I mean, Mike doesn't mind me saying ICC because if I say the sh it on the show as many times as possible, he gets happy. But anyway, <laughs> let's go back to um, so talk about that first interview. So, um, so Paul, this is kind of a funny story. Can you bring up that picture that I sent to you earlier today? Absolutely. Yeah. Here we go. And we should all be seeing that right now. So this is me at a convention. At the last minute, I was asked to do a Game of Thrones panel for a convention. And so I did this one. And, and luckily, I, I, the company I have has a Game of Thrones shirt. So I, so I ended up putting that on real quickly. But yeah. I was interviewing Finn Jones. And I took this picture real quickly, just because I like to take pictures of actors that I interview. And then Spencer got knocked off with the, um, with the microphone. And then you can close it now. OK. And then so, so, so I took that picture. And I was like, damn, I didn't get Spencer. It's like, you know, not a big deal, whatever. You got Finn, though. <laughs> a fucking week later, he's announced as Darth Vader. I was uh, so uh, effing pissed. Uh, I was so funny. angry. Yeah. I mean, like, hey, like, uh, you, can have, for you. you can have 52 Finn Jones in a room. I couldn't give a crap. It was, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. The, the, convention, the convention was in May 2000, whatever. And two weeks later, it was announced he was Darth Vader. That is awesome. So you got to but I'll give you credit, Spencer. There you are at a convention. You know, you want to talk about your career and you want to get as many people to come by and say hi to you and ever. And, you know, you, you want to do well at a convention. And here you are. You're about to play the biggest villain in the world. And you didn't say a freaking thing. <laughs> what did you do? Secrets. So hey? You are very good at keeping secrets. I did this. Remember you and I had an interview in, in a casino in Connecticut. At Foxwoods, great place. Yeah, great right. um, And uh, Ray Park, Ray Park was, did the interview with us. He sat there with us, Paul, for like an hour. And he was going to yeah. be, you know, be Darth Maul in, in six months. Right. And he wow. was a word. Not a word, man. These guys well, are good. Good. Say. The Sith Lords are good at keeping secrets. Sure, yeah. that's, how they, that's how they came to power, you know? <laughs> so. Exactly. The force is strong with us. <laughs> there we go. So that's as for the... Um, as you think about that time at Darth Vader, uh, how did how did you get the part? How did you how did you come across getting it? Well, well, it's like, it was like how I got this. I've said this many times in Q and A. I got a phone call off my agent, and they said, oh, "Spen, we need you to come into the agency, uh, Morella Cherry Agency, uh, for a for a sell tape." I said, "Okay," and I said, "What what what is it?" And they said, "We don't know." And I went, "What?" I said, "We, we don't know." So it's been really really secretive for this. Just come in, Spence. Just come with it. Okay, all right, cool. So we got, I got to the agency, and I said, right, okay, yeah, what's, we've got dialogue, no dialogue. And we just, we just want him to walk around with presence, like with authority. All right, okay, this is different. So I'll give him that. A few days later, they call back, call us back again for a, 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 another self tape. Now we've got a bit of dialogue. I said, right, great, sound, but we still don't know who the character is. We don't know what the production is. I said, this is really strange, man. So, you know, I've been in the business now for a what? <laughs> At this time, it was 14, 15 years. I uh, don't know, 40 films. Never, never experienced anything like this. So the third callback, now we know it's Star Wars, yeah? So now it's like, well, I, I had a feeling anyway. I had a feeling because the agency said, uh, my, my, uh, Joe, my agent, because I was saying, I think this is Darth Vader, you know? And he goes, no, it's not. His guy's got a lot of importance, you know, but it's not Darth Vader. I said, I'm telling you now it's Darth Vader. He goes, why, why, why do you think that's better? I said, well, at, at every end of the line, yeah, he's going. It's, I, I get it, it's the joke. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I mean, you know, every time I tell it, it gets worse and worse and worse. I've told it a few times, now it gets a bit boring. But yeah, so then, then, so they liked us and they called us up to Palmer Studios for the final audition, waiting to tickle the cross. So they took us up into a little room. Uh, there was a little tent there. They called the tent back, the screen, the sh yeah, and there was the boots, there's the gloves, there's the pants, there's the helmet, the cloak. And it's like, you know, it's every kid's dream, every actor's dream to play something that iconic, you know? Definitely. It was amazing. So, uh, and then the character really came to me. The voice came to me. Although it's James Earl Jones's voice to let you know the man. But the, when I get into the character, everything comes with it, you know. So this 
the voice came to me and the presence changed the room and I was like, I, you know what, at that specific time, I didn't get why Darth Vader was the most iconic bad guy on screen. But when his presence came to me, took over me and I went, oh, okay, okay, now I get it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's how I got it. Wow, that must have been like, um, man, I mean, <laughs> it'd be awesome just to get that part. I was just wondering when they call you and find you and you just see it and all that stuff. But yeah. um, so you've done some other things too. You were in uh, you were in Guardian of the Galaxies. That was a, yeah. a great movie. The first one's awesome. Yeah, it's good. Uh, my character's the bl the the big blue boop. I don't know if you've got kids listening, so I'll use that word. So yeah, so, so it's the big mean god. Oh no no, I'm, I'm now whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I'm 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 curious now, and I'm too too. Kevin broke the ice with the swearing anyway, so I think it's yeah. A I, I, I already <laughs> did it talking about Finn Jones. All right, right. The big blue bastard. Yeah, I'm. I'm like that with children. Oh, yeah, I don't like oh, that's swear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I am like that. That's what it is. That's Stacy. So yeah. So when I got that, I wasn't originally supposed to be going for uh, that that character. My original character. Do you remember uh, the uh, the guy that goes take her down to the showers? It'll be easier to clean up the blood down there. That's the guy I was originally supposed to be auditioning for. And they went, no, no, wait there. We'll give him the mean guard instead. Because I wasn't a hot reader when I was a kid. I used to look at pictures and stuff. I couldn't read too well till I was 32 years old. Very dyslexic. So when I didn't know who Guardians of the Galaxy were, I didn't know who they were. So <coughs> I was playing a guy called uh, the Blue, Blue Mean Guard. So my mum, when she comes to the premiere with me, I said to mum, I said, listen, it's, it's like a one minute scene, mum. And she, I don't, you know, he's kind of, he nicks the Walkman off a guy called Star-Lord, and uh, he comes back and gets it. And she's like, it's all right, son. You're in another film, it's all good. So the opening scene was so powerful, it affected everybody. Cancer's in a lot of families. That affected all of us. So we were all on an emotional trip straight away from the start to the start of that film. But as soon as I seen the Walkman, I went, oh, mum, 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 it's a really good minute though. This is really powerful, blah, blah, blah. And she, I turned on the coin, so how powerful it was. Because I had no idea, but as soon as I seen that Walkman, I went, wait there, that's the Walkman I had. You know, and then it clicked, you know what I mean? Because they wouldn't give us the full script, you know? They wouldn't give us the full script because it was so secretive. So we didn't know what was going on, unless we were a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously. You know, but it's, yeah, it's mad. That's where I got that part as well. Good that's a good, what, uh, what year did that movie come out, Paul? You know these things better than I do. We're looking at, what, six years ago? The, yeah, the first one? 2014. Six years ago. I think. Wow. I could fact check, but I'm I taking a guess. About four. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually the one that has all the Star Wars facts, and, and Paul mm -hmm. has everything else because, well, I don't leave my house. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't leave my house a year ago. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, so, what, so you've, been, yeah, you, you've had a pretty exciting career. Do you, have a, do you have a favorite part beyond those two from Guardians of the Galaxy? And, uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm one of the. I was. Uh, my mum used to say to me, stop kicking people and stop being a monster when I was a kid. I ended up playing monsters and being a professional kickboxer. So there's something in that, you know. Uh, I love playing the monsters. I love playing pirates. I love playing, like, the gangsters. You know, I love playing the aliens. So I, I've got every character is something I love about, you know. So I haven't got a favourite one. They're all, they're all my babies. And uh, they're not me, they're... They're in the presence of some, something or someone else. So uh, I become friends with them. They're all my friends. So it never gets lonely up here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What, um, what kind of movies did you like when you were a kid? I loved, like, the, right, this is the thing, see? I, one of my favorite films, one of my favorite films is The Wizard of Oz, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to bring Stacey in for this. Because when I, when I landed, I think it was at Topcon. Was it Topcon, Stacey? Topcon, yes. There you go. Yeah, right, there you go. No, I'm trying to tell the story now. So I knew when I was, when I got this little, it was for um, uh, our friend who runs it. Job yeah. of memory. Job yeah. of memory. Yeah. Right. So I, I said when I landed this, this, this Comic Con, it was only a small Comic Con, but uh, it was in Kansas City. It was in Kansas, Topeka. And I was like, oh my God, oh great. You know, I got really excited. It took me back straight to my childhood thinking something special is going to happen. Something special is going to happen on this. I'm going to go and see, I'm going to go and see the, the Wizard of Oz. 
I'm going to go and see where it's filmed. I was just starting geeking out, man. I was like, oh, my God. So when I got there, we did... Oh. Who's that? That's <laughs> hey, Mum, how you doing? I... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Oh, I, lo I love your mum. I know. We're family. Yeah, I love her. Okay. Right, so... She probably has no idea so, you're doing a live show being watched by thousands of yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. It's all good. It's all good. Hey, we're all family, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what, what, so let me go back to this one before I forget. So we did the Comic-Con thing, and then he took us to, uh, to, the, to the, where, where they filmed, where... The, where, where Annie Mae, Annie Mae, her, her farm was, right? The Wizard of Oz farm before it got took off and then they went to the Wizard of Oz. So we, 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 we did that and I was like, wow, uh, where's the farm? Well, there's no farm here, it's just a field, man. But that's the field, that's where they filmed it. So it's a bit of a big cornfield. I said, okay, the farm would have been over there. So the last day on the Comic Con, um, I just knew something special was going to happen, but I didn't have no idea I was going to be setting up an agency, do you know what I mean? But if something happened, and then Stacy came in with with, with Steiner, yeah, her, her youngest boy, and I don't know what it was. Don't, nothing to do with her being super pretty. It was just a, it was something there, you know. It was something there. I was looking at. Her, I was like, this is. I'm getting a really connection here, like chemistry, whatever you want to call it. So I did a bit of a kickboxing class because I like to do a bit kick, big, bit of a kickboxing class for the kids at the comic cons when I can. You know, when I'm in a position I can. So I did a little bit of a self-defense kickboxing class and Steiner come in. I think, did you join in, uh, Lacey, uh, like, uh, Stace? I'm sure you did. No, yeah. basically what happened was we met the first time and there was something there. And I was at home mowing the yard. And I thought, we need to go back. I don't know why, but we need to go back. And I'm in mowing clothes. And I, look, I went inside and I looked at Steiner and I said, Steiner, I think we need to go back to the, the Comic-Con. And he looked at me and he said, well, I have the Welsh flag. I'd love Spencer to sign. And so I said, okay. So this is two or three hours before the con ended. I said, well, let's just go back. And we went back and we went to Spencer's booth and he wasn't there. And I thought, oh, okay, well that's, okay, no big deal, you know? And somebody said, well, Spencer's downstairs. He's teaching a kickboxing class. And I looked at Steiner, and Steiner's shy or quiet, I guess is the best way to put it. And uh, I said, Steiner, let's go see. Well, Steiner was in the audience with me, and Spencer saw him. And that moment that Spencer knew his name and asked him to come join the class was huge for Steiner. Because he, he, he's quiet. He's not that kid. And that made a huge impression on him. And that's what Spencer does with the kids. So that's, I sat and watched. I think you said, Stacy or Steiner, come on in. And then you asked me and I was like, nope, go, go, go. So Spencer's right. teaching this kickboxing class so people need it. So go ahead, Spen. Yeah. It's a self-defense class. Yeah. This, story, yeah, that, that would, this story would end really great if, if, if it ends with Spencer roundhousing uh, Steiner. Did that happen? <laughs> no, Steiner roundhoused me. And I, it was just first yeah. lesson. <laughs> Ah, and then he dropped me. I said, like, nobody videoed that, they? you know, he's taking the champ out. But Steiner is such a beautiful soul. He is quiet, right? But that's his personality. But he's the get, he's a whiz kid. That kid is going to go, uh, he's probably there, up there now. He's, he's flying, you know. He is, he, and it comes from the parents. They've got, if, if, if the kids are really, really good and flying, it's, it comes from the parents. Lance, Steiner's, uh, Steiner's dad, he's, he's, he's just an incredible family. They're good, they're good people. How did you um? How did you get into martial arts in the first place? Um, well, believe it or not, I had a dream when I was a kid. I want to be a movie star. But how did I, you know? That's if people say to me, "So what do you want to do when you grow up? I'm going to be a movie star." What? So, you know, not many people say that, especially when you they live in real. There's not much. There's not much uh, acting going on around real, and <clears throat> and there's, there's nobody in, at the time. There's nobody in my family in the industry. Do you know what I mean? So. I I I think to myself, well, how am I going to get into the films? You know, I'm I've got this pull on my shoulders that you come into the films, it's your world. 
but you can't read or write, blah, 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 blah. You've never done any acting lessons. And what are you doing? What are you doing? So this little voice comes to my head, my conscience, my thoughts, my gods, whatever you want to call it, said, how are you going to get into the films? You're going to be a champion kickboxer. There's going to be a guy in the audience going, I oh, want to be in a movie. He wasn't there, right? But when I took the Welsh and British uh, kickboxing titles from the man of the UK, the best in the UK at the time, my mum goes to me, hey, Spen, can you take your Welsh belt and your British belt to Tony Scott Lee's place in, in, in town? And Tony Scott Lee was a photographer and his daughter's very, very famous uh, called Lisa Scott Lee. And she was in, in uh, a group called Steps. But at the time, it was huge. Check it out, Steps. Steps group in the UK, huge worldwide. So I took, these, I took my belts to the shop and I said, I tell, how are you doing? Right, so three days later, my belts are ready. At this time now, I thought the films, the entertainment world was me in the films, in the fighting game now. I'm seven or eight fights in, I'm deep in there. I'm thinking, well, this is the entertainment thing then, right? So I completely forgot about the films. So when the phone call came, you, 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 your belts are ready, uh, your pictures are ready, with it for, for, so my mum can put my picture, on her mantelpiece, proud mum, Welsh champion, son, British champion, son. Um, he goes to me, Tony goes, hey, Spen, he goes, you've got a great look, you know, have you, have you ever thought about being in the movies? And then his ball went, boom. I said, carry on. He goes, well, well, I've got some friends down in London that know some people that have a sports agency that put uh, athletes who are in the top of the game into the film careers, in, into the film world, you know, the, the like, adverts, TV, film." Can I send your pictures off? I said, yeah, please do. Yeah, good. Two, literally, a couple of days later, the owner of the AT rings me up. We meet up. And I get signed up verbally um, with the agency. And then, because I, really, I had a lot of problems reading. So I couldn't, I couldn't read or write. So a lot of the things they were sending me for, I was crashing straight away. All these auditions I was crashing. Uh, and like one of the, have you heard of Snatch? The, the film? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great film, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you know Tommy in, in, in the film, the little short scouser. Well, I, I, uh, I, I had an audition. I went down to Three Mill Studios. I was supposed to play him. But obviously, my, my, my face, my body, everything, was, that ticked the box. But obviously, I couldn't act because I couldn't read at the time. So that was really difficult for me, being dyslexic in the beginning. I've had to battle my way through there. And then the phone went dead. The phone went dead for 12 months because it probably got around the, the agencies, the casting agency, you, you know, you send us an actor and he can't, he can't read, what are you doing, you know? So when I come out of this last audition room before it went really quiet, one of the producers followed me out of the room and said, Spam, we can see you've got problems reading here. Do yourself a favour, get yourself some side reading lessons and we will see you in the future, which, which you know, helped my confidence around my partner was there, Jolene. And it was, just, it was just hard, man. I come out and there's a tear in my eye, you know what I mean? And I thought, well, how all my dreams crashed. I can't read or write. I'm, all my dreams crashed, you know? So I'll just stick with my fighting. So 12 months passed, and um, my phone goes. Uh, and it was, I forget who it was now. Some guy on the phone was, hey, Spen, are you still in the movies? What's going on? Because I was the kid in town that did really well. So I had the whole of the town supporting me. And they're ex excited for me that I've gone into the film world now. But I'm still an active fighter as well. Um, they, and they said, and he goes, I said to him, I said, no, you know, I can't read a writing, man. So I'm just leaving that dream. I'm going to forget about it because it, it, I can't be an active. I can't do the essential things, read. Um, so I'm going to leave it. And he goes, no, no, Sven. There's a radio station in the UK called uh, uh, Radio One. It's a very big radio station. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for a very, very tall actor to play the werewolf in the Prison of Azkaban in Harry Potter. Right? But it was a closed audition. They'd only, they'd only uh, use a professional actor. It wasn't an open audition, right? So it was an agency. So I made the phone call. We got, we got the audition the following day in, in Leeds' studios, which is the Harry Potter world now. I got a call back a, a week later. I never got a call back. And then I got the role. And then that's when the dream went boom. And nearly 50 films later, I'm talking to you guys. That's amazing. 
Excellent. I didn't know you, uh, I, I, and I should have done some research, but I like to kind of keep the conversation going uh, without me knowing the answers to the things I asked, but I, I didn't know you had a title. Yeah, yeah, it's Welsh British European kickboxing champion, undefeated pro boxer. Wow, I didn't know that. The force is strong with me. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's a question that'll be probably the most interesting question in the history of our con panel, Paul. Okay. And if he answers it, I guarantee you it's going to go viral. Okay. I shouldn't ask it, but I'm going to anyway. Could you take Ray yeah. Park? Could you take Ray Park? Oh, Mr. Sorry, I, I, when I, when I, I was out of the room for a minute then. The missus was talking. So, could I take Ray Park? I'd take Ray Park out for a few beers. <laughs> you know I mean? Very good I'll answer. Take, there you go. I'll take Ray Park out for a few beers. And you know what me, 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 I, I'd, give, I'd give my mate, I love Ray Park. He's a brother, you know. Uh, I gave Ray Park a shoulder ride. You know what I mean? He got a jump. My, it was in. Uh, it was my first time I ever met Ray. Was it was in Megacon in Orlando, right? And we just we just had a giggle. We had a giggle. Whenever me and Ray meet meet up at the Comic Cons, you know, we we uh, we have a giggle and we have a right good crack with the fans. Do you know what I mean? So when when we're doing selfies together in the booth. We'll, we'll, we'll make it extra fun for the fans. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that was a great answer. It was. was, a, was you know, maybe, maybe after after acting, uh, Spencer can get into uh, politics. That was a pretty, <laughs> was a pretty decent answer. <laughs> it was. But we're going to advertise that, because the question was asked and answered. Yeah. Yeah, good. Thanks. But so... um. So, Wizard of Oz is your favorite movie. That's that, that that's that's a pretty good one. What did they, they Stacy? Since you're a, since you're the local Kansas expert right now on the panel, <laughs> did they they actually film parts of that movie in Kansas? Yes, they did. They did. Spencer was actually there. Gypsy, who was the head of the TopCon, took Spencer and some of the actors to that spot. Yeah, I hope Gypsy's all right. If he's watching this, Gypsy, I hope you and the family are good, man. I just. In a while. I, I always figured they filmed that like on some back lot in Los Angeles, you know, and then obviously the Oz parts were filmed in sound studios, but uh, I think uh, right. Paul didn't just did the last, uh, the last munchkin just die like a year ago or something I like that. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Oh, really? Absolutely. So sad. What a film. Right. Yeah. But you know what you live, you know what soon you've gone on camera, like you need to say you live, you could become an eternal, you live forever. So he'll never be forgotten. He'll be, Follow the yellow big road. 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 You know what I mean? What other kind of films are you interested in, Spencer? Well, you know, I, I like Shaw, Sharon the Redemption, and things like that. I loved, I loved, um, what else? I loved, Mon I don't know if you remember Monkey Magic. Monkey Magic. No, it's a, it's a British thing. I loved that. I loved, um, what else did I like? You know, I loved the Hulk. Uh, I love just everything. I met the kid in the head. Do you know what I mean? So I just love all them sort of films. And there was a there was a TV show when I loved called The Minder. Yeah, The Equalizer. The Equalizer. Mm -hmm. Remember The Equalizer? Sure. Edward Woodward. Oh, from the 80s? Yeah, Edward Woodward. Okay. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved him. I seen him like a dad. You know, I loved him. I used to sneak. Mum, mum sometimes, whatever mum's mood was in, she'd let me stay up and watch. Equalizer because it's quite late at night. Uh, then if she didn't let me stay up, I'd be, I'd be because uh, we only had BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three back then. Yeah, had three channels. You know what I mean, and a Channel Four later on. <coughs> so I was a really young lad. So I'd sneak downstairs on the stairs and look through the gap in the door, watching Edward Woodward. Yeah, yeah, I loved that show. No, yeah. Cool. What about what about you, Stacey? What, what's your favorite movie? Wow. That's a loaded question. <laughs> well, easy. One, of course, is one of my favorites. Um, I love the Harry Potter series. Absolutely loved it. Um, back in the day, wow. Believe it or not, my mom took our TV away as kids so we'd read better. So I grew up without a TV. Um, I remember Hee Haw and some, some of the older shows. But it was one of those things we just didn't, MacGyver, about the MacGyver area, area, or in the 80s, MacGyver came out, or the old MacGyver. We started about then watching TV again. So I read a lot. 
but TV um, was not something I grew up with, which I'm grateful for. Fair enough. Uh, that's pretty wild. So what do you, um, speaking of like reading and stuff to do, what do you, uh, Spencer, what do you find yourself doing during, uh, you know, obviously this is being filmed during the, uh, the COVID crisis across the globe. So what do you, uh, what do you find yourself doing? Well, at the moment, I've, uh, you know, I've jumped out of the movie world. Uh, I'm still there, uh, very passionate about it, but uh, I'm going to start, uh, I've been doing a bit of painting. I start, I'm going to start up a little business window cleaning for my boys, so that it gives them something to do as well when I can, when I start back to uh, uh, filming again, when, then, when the gates open again. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I'm doing a lot of training, a bit of personal training, just keep myself busy, you know. For that eventual meet up with Ray Park. Yeah, <laughs> round two. Well, as I know, I think we're on about a round ten at the moment. We've met that many times, but yeah, I can't wait to see Ray again. Hope he's doing good. Yeah, I interviewed. I interviewed the 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 two, the two of you at the Foxwoods we were talking about earlier. Uh, no, he's yeah. a great. He's a, he's a great guy to talk to. He's a great. You know, he's just, great, and he takes on them comic cons. There, we have we me and you chat break. We could chat all day, couldn't we? And we just bounce off to the crowd. But when when Ray starts, uh, you know, you got front seat, haven't you? You were Ray Park, right? I'm the same, I, you know, I'm a bit of a fan of Ray. And uh, I'd have me Coca-Cola, me popcorn, just eating it like that, and Ray would be just going off on one for an hour, you know. It was just great. It was good, really cool, really cool. Paul, that convention is on YouTube, the one, the discussion between uh, Spencer, I, and Ray. Maybe you could put that in the uh, show notes so the uh, sure. viewers can watch that as well uh, later on. That was, because um, we ended up talking about um, Spencer and I, like, hanging out and doing other shows and stuff like that. And I guess the casino didn't like that, so... During the interview, halfway through the interview, I don't remember the Spencer, uh, this guy in one of those, those casino suits, those black casino suits, comes waddling up to the stage and hands me a piece of paper. I'm like, what the hell is this? I open it up and look at it. It says, talk about the casino. That's what it said. <laughs> right in the middle of our panel. I was just, yeah, you're at a casino else. and, you know, it's kind of, but it was just, uh, it was like a really good time. So, um, so what about, uh, do you have any other films lined up? Are you looking to maybe... Uh, I've got a film called Devil. It comes out towards the end of the year, or, or the COVID-19 might have put it back till next year. But we filmed that in Prague. Uh, and yeah, if you like your horrors, you're going to like that one. It's going to be very, very deep. You know, get you, if you don't like horrors, get your cushion ready, you know, because it's, uh, yeah. And my character's called HDC. Obviously, I can't tell you too much about what's going on, but his, his character is a horrific demon creature. Uh, it's all I can tell you. It's all I can tell you. But I can say it's uh, and they filmed they filmed it in Prague. That's right. That's yeah. an awesome city. I don't know. Well, I know. filmed there before. Before then, I was on the uh, Carnival Row, and I played the Trow, and I played um, uh, Death Eater, uh, the Dark Asher of Death Eater, Dark Asher. So, uh, so I was I was in and out of Prague for like a year. So I uh, I love Prague. It's a great place. Good food. Yeah, good food. Good people. Good drink. No, it's a beautiful city, very old city, very, very old. Uh, pretty much, pretty much untouched from the war. As far That's as it. architecture and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful old buildings, gorgeous. You know, Paul, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I forgot to ask you if you had any uh, questions for uh, Mr. Wilding. I do, I do, I do, I do. So, as a former member of the 501st Legion, I'm a huge super Uber fan. Let me let me just say, let me just say. Well done for all your work out there. Five or first, you give up your time for free. You go around the hospitals to see the poorly kids. You guys are the heroes. Just want to say that. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I look up wow. to you guys, and I well, see you guys nice. all over the planet, man. You know, five or first rule, man. Well, well, thanks for that. That's what this whole, all this stuff is about. All my five or first yeah. gear. Um, not tall enough to play Vader. Always wanted to, but uh, way too short. I'd be like movie magic, mate. Movie magic. <laughs> you can make you can make yourself taller or smaller there you go um so a lot of the guys i you know having discussions on our forums about uh rogue one which a lot of people will tell you is the best modern star wars film and a lot of people owe it to your scene where you're slaughtering all those rebels and well that that scene i'll never take any credit for any of his work that there is dan's scene it's darth oh. vader's scene yes but two of us played darth vader Dan is in the suit in that scene there. He killed it. Dan is a top, top stunt man. He's a top, he's a brilliant actor. And he's, a, he's one of the best horse, horsemen on the planet. And he's a sword master as well. So that was his baby. Ah. I, the other scenes, 
I did the other scenes and I did the promotional work. But this has been said a million times. I don't understand why you, you didn't know that. But there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe I should have, maybe I should have told Paul before. I asked earlier. Oops. Yeah. But it doesn't matter, you know. Darth Vader. I got an idea. I got an idea. Yeah, let me, I got let an me idea. just say this. Let me just say this. Darth Vader, right? He is his own character and he chooses his actors, man. There's one presence of Darth Vader and that nobody will ever be able to change Darth Vader, the way he moves, the way he talks, the way he is, the way his presence. Nobody can ever do that. He'll just keep on using his actors over the next thousand years. I'd say to edit that part out, but his response was funny. He's like, I don't know why the hell you didn't really know that. <laughs> We're keeping that. that We're keeping great. that. That was fantastic. That was funny as Kevin knew and didn't tell you, Paul. He's a yeah. he's not a very good guy to work I, with. I, I, know. Just didn't think, I just didn't I just didn't think I just didn't think to mention it because I mean hell if Steve McQueen had a stunt guy, you know if Steve True. McQueen can have a stunt guy, so can freaking Spencer Wilding. There you go. <laughs> well, no, we, 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 you know we're both we're both factors on the show. We, you know we're both credited for it. I got I'm top billed for it, but we, you know it, it wasn't my stunt double. It was Dan. Dan was a Dan was an actor on it. You know we're both we're both credited for it. I didn't mean to. No, no, no. It's all right. But I just don't want. I don't want. Uh, you know. Take anything off, off anybody, you know. That's the way it is. That's the way I am. Well, that's great, though. But Stacy, do, do you have a favorite? Now we won't say Darth Vader. We'll put him off the side. But do you have a favorite Star Wars character um, other than Darth actually, Vader? Believe it or not, as a kid in grade school, I used to play R two D two. And now we've got him on the books. That makes we sense because you're like you're like short and cute. You know? <laughs> I used to go around. Bee, 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 bee. Um, yeah, no, I loved R2-D2. R2-D2 and C-3PO. Why, I'm not sure, but I just absolutely adored that duo. Well, they were yeah, awesome as a duo. They know, were tremendous. What a great, great show. It's like 50, what did they say? Like about 30, 40, 50 years ahead of its time when they first yeah. came out with Star Wars. It's a brilliant one. Yeah, I guess, I remember I guess the, story, the four right? of us, the whole, all of us were about, about the same age. And we were all yeah, well, I was five. I was five years old when that came out, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad, my dad took me to see it because I wanted to see. Everybody wanted to see Star Wars. Everybody wanted to see the the spaceships, the, the you know, the everything. It was just amazing. And my dad took me to a uh, Prostatin Cinema, right, which is the next town from us. And uh, <laughs> I was sat in the cinema with my popcorn and my ice cream and Coca Cola, and I'm looking like this. Where's the spaceship? I'm only five. Where's the spaceship? 20 minutes into it, still no spaceship. And what he did, he didn't want to see it, so he took me to see Pink Panther instead. <laughs> I like <laughs> So my mum took me back there. <laughs> so mum scored plenty well, of that's, points. that's kind of cruel to do that to, to a Yeah, kid. because, yeah, Neville John Wilde, if you're watching this, do not to a poor five-year-old, you naughty dad. Yeah, I was the same age. I was I was five when Star Wars came out too, and uh, yeah. uh, a legitimate Darth Vader fan. That was that was definitely my favorite. Paul, what's your favorite Star Wars character? Since we've got everybody here, Vader, without question, absolutely Vader. You're an ass kisser. No, an ass kisser. <laughs> everything you're happens to him. With stormtroopers. I yes. am. I'll help you out in a minute. Don't make me do it. Spencer, as a as a male, I should tell you that you should never do this around a guy. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. never did that once, you guy. <laughs> yeah, I've choked out a few of my time though. There you go. So, uh, so, Paul, do you have a question that won't piss Spencer off? No, um, <laughs> all of them are completely offensive. Though. So, no, I do have a question. Did you have to learn all your dialogue and deliver your dialogue? Well, they give it what, what how it works. They give me additional dialogue, so it's not the dialogue you hear with uh, James or Jones. Yeah, but it's a space thing. There's, uh, there's uh, I, I'll do it for you. I've done it several times. Uh, you know when you sit first see Vader walk through the steam, yeah, great scene. And he walks and and then there's that's the first time as well I've ever experienced a fight with another actor, with dialogue not physical. You know it was a real battle going out between Krennic and and Vader, and you know I'm a third party and I'm I'm just watching him. I'm just you know he's in my body Vader and he's using me as using me as being Vader himself. But there's, there's a right battle, and I go, um, so you're going to have to feel this for a minute. So we walk through the steam, blah, 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 and I go, don't be too sure that the Emperor is as impressed with you as you are with yourself. Director, reckless ambition is not the quality the Emperor admires, but your efforts will still be rewarded. So I did that, right? 
I was in the suit in the moment and it was like 10 times more Vader-ish as well, you know? So I love that, you know, I, 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 I love that Vader allow, allow me to use his voice come through me as well, you know? That's awesome. But I, I would, I'd have to say that, that that was not a fight between Vader and Krennic because Krennic didn't have a freaking chance. That was, no, was no, but I could, feel, I could feel him. I could feel him, you know? I'm like, you know, I was like, like a fly, flattening him away, you know? But you could feel that, I could feel that, you know? Mm. Cool. No, it was a great. It was a great movie. I, I would definitely say out, out of the, uh, what did we had five new uh, Disney movies? Yeah, about mm-hmm. three too many. Okay, I'm doing. I'm just doing the math here. Okay, and so the, so Rogue One would have been the best, definitely. Definitely. Oh, without a question, Rogue One is absolutely the best. Yeah, I think it's what the one they gave the fans what they wanted because Gareth 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 uh, the uh, the director, he was a huge huge fan, so he knew how the fans were feeling. You know, yeah, and that scene I, just, I, I, just I, took everything out, didn't it? That last scene, it's a, the whole you know, the whole film was brilliant. Uh, but that last scene, it was, it was fans, it's, they must have been you know, jumping all over the place and falling inside the seat and just rolling around the floor when Vader come out and chopping everybody up because that's what you want to see Vader do. I have to admit, my favorite part of that movie, other than the Vader fight scene, was mm-hmm. um, was the uh. When the X-wings were attacking the the, uh, the the Imperial base, and they showed Gold Leader and Red Leader from the 1977 yeah. movie, yeah, and uh, uh, I had heard that Gareth Edwards, who is like you said, is a big fan of Star Wars, he went mm. to a, a a public viewing of that when the movie came out, and when the audience responded to that part, he like raised yeah. his hand. In the front. Yes, yeah, he felt victorious that that little idea he had worked mm. out well. It was the, it was the uh, it was a great film. And it had yeah, just all that continuity. It just really glued everything together from the, you know, the original trilogy into what happens. Sorry, mate. Sorry, I've got people ringing through. I'm on my phone, so if somebody rings through, you're going to lose That's, get that's fine. If you want, and if you want your mother to go running back in the background, too, that's <laughs> cool. Well, we'll have to go to the phone for that. <laughs> you, can do, uh, you can do whatever you, uh, you, can do whatever you want. But, um, Paul, do you have, did you have another question? Uh, let's see. I like spread. Notice so, how I don't look up questions. I just have them in my head because I'm a professional host. Paul, right, go on. <laughs> so, yeah, I do actually have another question. Um, and it's more about the costume. As you know, become 501st guy, building my own costume. For your, for your uh, armor that you had to wear there, was it already built or did they build it around you? I'm curious. No, it's the original suit. Well, it's this. It was Dave Prouse's. I'm sure Dave Prouse had that suit on. But don't quote me on that. I may be wrong. But, uh, oh no, I can I can assure you that they made a new suit. They are then. That was they new. are then sound. So so they are, there's a new suit. But um, it was uh, it, it was. I, I found I've worn many many costumes over the past seventeen years. Mm. I found it quite comfortable. It was okay. You know, after after about. 10 hours, if we were doing a long 12, 13, 14 hour day, it, it, it like towards the end of the day, you'll feel your shoulders shaping a little bit, but you just stretch it out. But it was, it was great. You know, when you walk through the steam, you go blind though, because of the steam and the red, red vase of plastic, that would just, just steam up straight away. So you have to use the force then, you know what I mean? How long did it take from the first thing you put on, which I assume is the leather under thing? How long from that to the end does it take? To do right. Well, when you go into the character there now, the girls, they, they honestly, they, it's Vader. So you've got to be very, very gentle with Vader. You know, you're not going to rush putting stuff up or anything like that. They, they, they respect, everybody respects Vader. And when he's in the house, they take the time, put it on. So it's probably, I don't know, about 40 minutes, something like that, putting it all on 40, 50 minutes from start to finish. And the last thing that goes on, it's the saber, you know, the lightsaber, and it put on very gently. Complete. I don't know how this is going to go with the public, but did you just say you got dressed by women? Some of my dresses were, were ladies, yes. <laughs> I think that's, you, get to, you get to wear a Vader suit and get put on by, by, by a bunch of women. That's pretty, uh, you can't get better than that. Nothing wrong with that, mate. We're all equal rights, baby. 
You know what I mean? Just as good as each other. Exactly, exactly. If you can be dressed by a man, you can be dressed by a woman. I think that's, uh, I totally stand for that. That's just fine. <laughs> but um, so what is this, um, what is the company that you guys have? I want to talk a little bit. That's why we- Right, oh, let's stay, let's stay, because Stacey needs to come in here. You tell her all about it, Stacey. Beast Within Productions. Um, Spencer blessed our family by allowing us to come into his fold without hardly even knowing us. And um, we didn't know the world real well, but Spencer brought us in. He taught us everything we needed to know. And we opened the Beast Within Productions, which is a company which represents um, actors at Comic Cons, all the different um, types. And the Beast Within Productions, I came up with a name, right, Stace? Because yeah, when I was when I when I was a kid, I was a bit of a black panther. I was a cat. I always thought I was a cat. And then I was going going through the, the fighting and the fighting and more martial arts and the robots and, and I just got more in touch with the, the beasts, you know. So I thought the beast within. So I come up with the name. Let's call it the beast within productions. What do you reckon, Stace? And we all we, we all agree. Before, didn't you years before you even mm. knew it? Yeah, yeah, beast within, yeah. I thought it, it was the perfect name. A uh, little known fact, Lance and I used to rescue tigers and bears. and other, So when Spencer said did. that, it really connected. Yeah, but Stacy, listen, Stacy, that special license you have for wild animals, right? Stacy used, used to have a, like a seven, what was it, 800 pound bear? Yeah, a Russian, a Russian grizzly Cougar bear. Cougar cats, lions, tigers. Whoa, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Yeah. Stacey. Let me get this straight. You had a bear in your freaking house? No, 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 no. We uh, we opened a company that rescued lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Um, yeah. Oh my. <laughs> and Stacey, so you should, have had, you should have had some of your pictures. Show some of your pictures. It's amazing. I don't have them on me. I will oh. have them sometime. I promise. But yeah, so we uh, we rescued bears, and one of the bears that came to us was a circus bear. It came as a very small cub um, because the circus had been closed down and it was from Russia. So yes, Ozzy Bear was a giant, giant bear. He stood about 12 foot tall, 13 foot tall. And where did you put this bear? We had facilities. So we had built facilities um, for tigers. We had separate facilities for all the animals because the USDA would bring us animals that maybe were confiscated and not the nicest animals. So we had to build facilities based on the animals we had. So we gave them homes. Some of these animals were owned by drug dealers. Some of them were owned by just individuals that didn't realize when you buy a tiger, it grows <laughs> and it gets gigantic and it can be dangerous. Um, we rescued snakes, birds, kinkajous, monkeys, a little bit of everything. So, so tigers can be dangerous. Believe it or not, times, times it is possible somewhere down the road that a tiger could actually be dangerous to humans. All right? so <laughs> everyone who watches our show knows that it is very small possibility, but there is a possibility that a tiger can hurt you. Okay. We, we did a lot of education, a lot of education. So, so the beast that we work with, and then Spencer brought up the beast within, and I thought that's perfect. Mm. Hey, look, look at that. Look at that t shirt. Look what's going on. Look. Oh, there you go. That's fun made, that is. I love it when I go to the Comic Cons. Sorry, Stace. I, lo I love it when I go to the Comic Cons because they, uh, I always get little gifts off the fans, and that's beautiful. And, they, and somebody brought over the t shirt, and it's like, yeah, off oh, beautiful. Sorry, Stace. Sorry, Stace. Um, but how incredible is that? Stacey, like, used to wrestle with bears and tags, and, you know. So when I come on, no problem. She could wrestle me all day long, no problem. Have you have you ever been in a cage with a tiger, lion, and or bear? Me? No, Paul. Paul, have you ever been? No, yes, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the time. I mean, wow. we had to feed them and clean them and take care of them. So yes, yes, I have actually grabbed a tiger by the tail. Wow. So How did that go? Right, Stacey, maybe maybe you can uh, you can send me some pictures on Facebook and I'll have Paul put them on the video. I maybe would love to do that. Video, that's too much work for you, right? That's too much work for you. I can do I that. Wait, she sees. Well, Paul actually Paul does this for a living. So you want to you can you can do some super editing. Yeah. Some pictures on here. I want to see some pictures of Stacy pile driving a fucking tiger. I want to see that. <laughs> I want to see her. I want to see the tiger's expression when she grabs the tail. That's what I want to see. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't grab a tiger by the tail. Oh. She did. Yeah, I had to. 
So, so the Beast Productions, am I saying it right? Beast Productions? Beast Within. Beast Within, Production. Beast Within Productions. I knew I had something. I, I actually have one of your shirts in the, uh, in the closet downstairs. Um, let me, uh, so, so you guys, uh, you guys represent a bunch of actors. Do you want to name drop a little bit? Maybe possibly some actors we might get here on the con panel. Because because one of these days, Paul, we talked about leaving Star Wars. We did. Because you and I are That's pretty true. big in the Star Wars world. And we should get, we, we almost had a Klingon one. So we, we are going to get him next week, but. <laughs> we have so many. Like if you go to our website, beastwithinproductionsusa.com, you can see all of our actors. But we've, I mean, Spencer is the reason we have the actors we do. Um, Bobby Holland Hanton. I mean, he's an amazing stuntman. Amazing. Spencer has worked yeah. with him several times. Would you like to say a little bit about him? Well, Bob, Bobby, yeah. Bobby's very special. He was, um, Bobby's in the British Olympics uh, team for uh, gymnastics and stuff like that. Is that, uh, Thor, is that Thor stuntman? That's Thor stuntman. He does all his films. You know, he's been working with him for the past 10 years as such, I think, that long. But um, he's an incredible boy, and we're very, very, very lucky to be re representing him. We're really lucky, looking forward to getting him out sometime as well. Do you know what I mean? We just, it, what's going to be happening, but obviously with COVID-19, it stopped everything. You know, it is what it is. Uh, we, you know, hopefully it'll sort itself out for next year. But we've got a lot, so much great talent on our books. You know, we're a new agency as such, but we, it's, it's growing. You know, it's growing in its days. Yes, it absolutely is. We've got people like um, Mark Silk, a voice actor. Um, Josh Sussman from Wizards from Waverly Place. We've got Felix Silla, Twiggy. Yeah, um, we've got Felix. Oh, is it Felix? Really, really I love Felix. In fact, he was booked this year, but we had to stop because of COVID. So hopefully next year. He'll actually be coming to Kansas. Um, we've got Peter Dante, Aaron Schwartz. I mean, there's so many we can name. Jeremy Palco, Ann Mahoney, uh, Sirianne Williams. There's just, there's so many. You'll have to go to our website. All right. Yeah, I, I, Felix is great. If you, I, I don't want to get a discussion of politics, but if you get Felix and Gil Gerard together, obviously <laughs> from, from Buck Rogers, I won't say who's who, but but one's on the left and one's on the right, and it's just so funny to listen to them talk because they're just uh, uh, I sat on the off. table. I sat on the table. Well, didn't we stay? It's the first time. Yes. I sat on the table with bitty 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 dirty and and uh, and and uh, and his partner in crime. You know what I mean? From a uh, uh, book Rogers in the and the twenty fourth century. It was like yeah, Gil Gerard. I was sat. I was sat. like that. Ah, I'm just completely massively geeking out, man. You know, that's why I love going to the comic cons because I'm never, I'm not going to work with these guys. You know, I mean, it's a very, very slim chance of me working with these guys. Uh, and so to be on comic cons, I've been to lots of comic cons to meet the fans and to meet that meet the, uh, the 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 living legends like these. We make these actors. It's just incredible. So I love it. It's great. And, uh, and and so I, I so Stacy, we've worked together a lot at a lot of shows. So Jeremy, Jeremy Palco, I got to know uh, uh, through the years of hanging out. And then when he died in Walking Dead, um, I stopped watching the show. I just I don't think I watched it since he <laughs> no died. Way. It's Whoa. something about that. Those episodes, right when he died, it's just the episodes just went downhill. And I, I haven't watched yeah. the show since then. So so R.I.P. Uh, uh, Jeremy's character. <laughs> what? Jeremy hears that a lot. We, we hear at the cons that people just quit watching the show. If you, if you look at the numbers, it went from, uh, you know, seven, eight million its first season, up to 14 million for its middle seasons, and then just dropped down to five. They need to bring him back. That's what they need to do, bring him up, rise him up from the dead. And you know they could because he technically, you never know. You just never know. Oh, we can come yeah. back as a zombie. Yeah, because he did not. I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. I always thought what would be kind of cool is what they do is if they have like a zombie that's Tom Hanks, you know, like a super <laughs> celebrity. You know, wouldn't it know? Like, like for, for instance, in this world that they live in, the, the Walking Dead world, there's going to be a dead Brad Pitt and a dead so and so, and, and wouldn't they be walking? I think it'd be funny if they're like, oh my God, look, it's Tom Hanks, and they're all taking pictures with him and stuff. <laughs> they did something like that in Zombie Land. They had Bill Murray in there pretending to be a zombie so he wouldn't get killed by a zombie. <laughs> Oh, you could call it. You could call it dead con. Dead con. <laughs> dead. There you, you go. got it, Sven. There you go. Boom. But I think, uh, 
the, 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 I think Walking Dead, what it tried to do, it looked at Game of Thrones and said, wow, we should do what they're doing with all the intricate characters, the intricate places. And it got, it got too muddled. It wasn't well written and it just tanked. I just, I, I mean, um, I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. It had a long run, long run. How the hell, look, we got four people here with nothing to do with The Walking Dead and we're talking about The Walking Dead and nobody's watching it. <laughs> Back to Star Wars. Spencer, do you have a favorite Star Wars character that's not, uh, that's not Darth Vader? You know, I love, I love Princess Leia. I love Princess Leia. A uh, little father-daughter thing going on there. That's I, I loved, I loved it. No, I just love the question. And uh, we, we, we had, uh, there's a Spencer Wild, believe it or not, stays, isn't it? There's a yeah. Spencer Wilding Day in Las Vegas, right? Yes, it was amazing. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, the Spencer Wilding Day? In Las Vegas, yeah. A car stars, yeah. Car stars. Last time they awarded, um, we got award, I'll tell you all about it now. But basically, like, like, right, I'll start from the beginning. So we get a phone call. Uh, stage was up said, listen, there's, there's a charity group over in, in Las Vegas. They want to honour your name. Um, I said, really? I said, with all the work, not just Vader, not just Vader, all, all your career, all your, everything you've done with your charity work and blah, 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 blah. I said, all right, great. So what's, what's the crap? Well, we've got to fly ourselves over there. <clears throat> and uh, they're going to look after us when we get there. They're going to put like 75 movie, movie cars on that have been in movies. They're going to close off the whole strip. There's going to be 250,000 people there. Uh, you, get, you and, and Todd Fisher are going to be under the sign, get awarded by the commissioner, the chief of police, the mayor. There was a lot of, you know, I think we were all the Las Vegas girls there. We're down in uh, Bourbon Street. Was it? What's that street called again? Um, it was actually the main drag in Vegas. Yeah. Where we took the car. They closed it down. It was a parade for Spencer. It was amazing. It was just like, what? You know, I'm a kid from real, and I've got Spencer Wilden Day there. And I'm Paul Casey, the amazing Paul Casey, um, who runs at the entertainment in Las Vegas. He, he, he said last time they awarded something this big, but yours is bigger, right? Was is Ringo Starr out of the Beatles. I went, no way. You wind it up. You know, it's like, what? That's amazing. You know, it's, it's amazing. I feel very honoured and blessed. The big man is upstairs is looking after me, you know. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I feel, I feel great. All right, it's cool. So we're going to um, hopefully see you guys on the uh, convention circuit when things pick up again. We're hopefully, I guess, what are they saying, Paul? Late winter right now is what we're looking at for conventions coming back? Yeah, at best, yeah. Late winter of 2020 or 2021? Because I know we're already booked. Spencer's booked at Planet. He's booked at Colorado Springs, Colton Con. He's booked at Rhode Island. So those, those, those shows are for next year, though. Next so, year. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Rhode because I know Rhode Island got, got you know, canceled, as, as every other show in the area got canceled. The only one that was um, – my next show that's scheduled right now is in April. Okay. So, okay. And I, and I do a lot of these. I do, like, you know, 18 or so of these a year. And um, they're great – fun and i missed them this year and it was um you know last year you know what it's gonna be one big party when it comes back though and it hey it's gonna make them even even bigger and better and greater i think because everybody's had this time off you know and it's real stressful times and stuff like that. so when they open that gate up it's going to be boom definitely you know, a lot of cabin be, fever definitely a lot yeah, of cabin fever yeah for sure yeah, obviously it'll be a lot of, I think a little bit you know you may you may have to wear masks at a comic con <laughs> everybody does anyway so it's all good <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well so, done. Yeah, you know, it's one of them, just clean your hands a bit more. And just, you know, we just it's, it's a new world for us all now, and that's it, isn't it? It's not going away anytime soon, so it's what it is, what it is. Do, do as we're told, and uh, hopefully it goes away, eh? Um, hopefully it does. I think it's going to be a little bit more trepidation. For the, it's going to be the first couple of ones that are going to have to happen uh, yeah. before, before the big throngs come. Uh, people will go back. I think because there's there's something at a convention that you can't get online, even though um, even though the con panel is trying as best as it can to not be a stupid show, um, it's yeah. still like, ever replaced the convention where you have all the people in the audience getting to mm. ask the questions. And, yeah, you know, so we're 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 going to be back, but uh, we're going to wrap it up here a bit. Oh, I do have a new Darth Vader piece though, but I, I got a shameless yeah. plug. Good. Look at that. Let me uh, spotlight you there, Kevin. One second. There you go. Like that. Uh, it's okay, hold it out. Joseph, Let me Campbell, get that. Joseph Campbell sl uh, yeah. a slogan on okay. it, and it's from the Power yeah. of Myth, Joseph Campbell. Let me just take a picture of that as well. Hold it back up in the back. 
We'll do that. I'll send you a picture, mate. I'll do it again. Go on, lift it up. All right, here we go. <laughs> no, turn it around. Turn, What's turn the around. Like that? There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's good. Cool. cool. Yeah, cool. Done. But uh, uh, Stacy Spence, I'll, I'll send you guys. There's a whole series of them. I'll, I'll send them to you. But uh, just a shameless plug there for uh, the Norse Legion, <laughs> my, my little company. But um, Stacy, what's that uh, website again? One last time. East Within Productions USA dot com. We got it. anybody who wants to uh, uh, have a convention and maybe have some of the wonderful actors and actresses that Stacy represents. Stacy Spencer and Lance, right? Isn't Lance part of it? Lance is the man behind he's the stage. He's the silent partner. <laughs> Lance has Lance absolutely, absolutely no internet. All the technical stuff. Lance has like no internet presence at all. He wouldn't even know he existed if I hadn't met him before. And yeah, he no, he, 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 he can work in the shadows, Lance. He's like a ninja, isn't he? He's like, he's there, he's there, he's not there, he's there, but he's not there. He's there. He's not there. <laughs> right. But uh, well, I want to thank both of you for uh, coming and and, uh, and joining the show with us. This was a, this was a great episode. Great, uh, great back coming back at the con panel. And we will be back uh, next week, hopefully with uh, God knows who. Uh, Paul, thank you very much for um, setting everything up. And My pleasure. We'll see you when we see you. Bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>